Hi guys, I tested the friction properties of all my mouse pads and like a true engineer, made a spreadsheet about them. If your free time doesn't include making spreadsheets, is it really free time? Press like and subscribe if you like spreadsheets. Even though my spreadsheet has only 11 pads on it, I am calling it the Yeros Mousepad Master Sheet version 1.0. That is because all the pads I'm going to review in the future are going to be listed on it. So in a year we may have hundreds, even thousands of mouse pads in it. I put a link to the master sheet to the description, so take a look if you want. A small disclaimer though. These are just my results and your experiences may be drastically different based on your environmental factors such as temperature and humidity and also your mouse of choice and your mouse feet. But without further ado let's get over my results. So overall the fastest pad was without a doubt the Vansa Ice. It is a fiberglass infused mouse pad I reviewed in September I guess. Yeah, it was really fast. Surprisingly it had almost the same level of static friction than the second fastest pad, the X-Ray Pad Aqua Control 2 Sakura Edition, which had uh, a tad bit more kinetic friction, so it was overall the second fastest pad of them all. A close third was the Artisan Hayate Otsu in soft. The slowest pad was really slow compared to the rest and there was a fairly unknown Corsair MM350 Pro which in my opinion should be left unknown. It is horrible, just terrible, but enough about that. The second slowest was the Steel Series QCK Heavy <laughs> which has like wear and tear, needs to have it. Otherwise, it's not a real QCK. They were similar in static friction, but the MM350 Pro was two times slower than the QCK. It was actually really hard to get the mouse moving on it when I tested how much the weight affects the glide properties of the mouse pad. The middle section was mostly your cloth pads like the Smooth Criminal from The Whale, the Saturn from Little Gaming Gear and the GP4 from Extrify. But there were also some really, really interesting surprises in the midst of the control pad section. The Artisan here in Xsoft had constantly more static friction than the Vax CPA for example, but the Vax CPA had more kinetic friction so it was overall slower. But the here was not fast by any means on the kinetic friction side either. So from these results I got confirmation that the Xsoft base makes the here much lower than you'd think. So if you are going to buy the here my suggestion is to buy the soft or mid base version or the Xsoft if you are looking for a control pad that feels like sandpaper. The biggest surprise for me was the Razer Gigantis V2. It was really consistent on my tests and constantly got the fourth place in kinetic and static friction. So it may be a really good pick if you're looking for a budget pad with good availability, which has desk mat versions available, maybe. The best balance of static and kinetic friction was without a doubt on the Artisan Hayate Otsu Soft. Also, if you prefer a more budget friendly option, good balance was also on the Razer Gigantus V2. The Gigantus is not very durable however and the surface soaks up dirt like a sponge so to maintain the balance of kinetic and static friction you need to clean it fairly often. I also wanted to know how much the friction properties are affected by the weight applied to the mouse. In terms of static friction with the weight most pads started moving at 10 to 20 percent smaller angles than without the weight but one pad behaved exceptionally consistent with and without the weight. And that pad was none other than the X-Ray Pad Aqua Control 2. There was in fact only 0.27% difference in my tests. In terms of kinetic friction, it was really clear that the slower the pad was, the more it was affected by the extra 120 grams of weight on the mouse. For example, the Aqua Control 2 was only 13% faster with the extra weight and the VAC CPA was 42% faster with the applied weight. So, quite a difference there. To the front page of the mousepad master sheet, I also put a couple columns representing the overall quality and the price range, so you can see if the pad has good bang for your buck ratio, patent pending. If the pad is trash quality, the quality is valued at 1, and if it's artisan level quality, value is 4. The best bang for your buck from all my pads will no doubt go to 
the extra pad aqua control 2 sakura edition it is durable consistent good stitching and overall a great pad with i'd say a nice design as well so that's about it if you want to know more about how i tested the pads take a look at this video and see you on the next one goodbye